As stated in the Westlife song Lull, my name is John, and I am currently infatuated with an uptown girl. When I required a lawyer to bring a lawsuit against a client who had engaged in piracy, I found Sarah two years ago. For some reason, my sister claims I bring out the best in her, so she enjoys having me around, although her mother does not seem to get along with me. Though I worry one of my rivals may soon win her hand. He's a man of 28, and just to be clear, let me tell you how I got into court. I consider myself to be a painter by passion, and I believe that my painting skills far exceed my photographic abilities. For a client, I unintentionally sold a picture to a cunning fox. After going to modify the artwork, he called him to discuss selling it for more money. Even though I have the power to fight him, I made the decision to launch a lawsuit in response to his actions. I lacked the funds necessary to hire a competent attorney. When I asked for a public defender, Noah, who had gorgeous white eyes, silky hair, and a stunning smile, entered the room. I admit that I lost track of my mission. My attention was drawn more to the gleaming stone that had entered the space. I had anticipated that the case would take a little longer to allow me to see her more frequently, but she was so good that our court dates would end after just two appearances. She gave me a strange look and even inquired as to why I wasn't celebrating the lawsuit victory. That would be my last time seeing her, so she was unaware of my sadness. I was her biggest admirer, so months after the case, I made the decision to go to every court appearance she had. After observing her successfully handle situations for a few months, I made the decision to ask her out. To my amazement, she accepted. We continued dating after that, and I intend to ask her for her hand in marriage today. My mother instilled in me the idea that my in-laws must approve of my marriage. Goodbye. In front of her entire family, I would like to ask her. My competitor is a family friend of Sarah's, and I'm afraid he'll win her hand because he's rich and manages the family business's finances. I don't even make a quarter of what Sarah makes each month. Therefore, I don't have anything to offer her. Do not misunderstand. I'm not marrying her in order to outdo Max. I do this because I genuinely love Sarah. Mr. Redito is here to interrupt, guys, because the plot of this narrative is really unpredictable. The first update happens two months after the first one. In case you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button to watch daily videos and contribute to the channel's support. Now, let's get started with the first update. Since my last post was two months ago, allow me to give you an update on how I'm going to break my mother's heart. Do you recall me telling you that my mother always instilled in me the value of gaining my parents' approval before getting married? Yes, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I believe that Sarah's invitation to supper at their place would be a perfect chance to pop the question. So I followed my plan precisely and asked her out immediately following the meal. Her eyes were so unbelievable to her. She was ecstatic and was welcomed into their home immediately. Sophie was also thrilled that I was joining them. Her mother, however, was not at all pleased with us. I pushed her away as she got up and put a ring on Sarah's finger, and she looked at the ring as if I had just gotten up from the ground. For heaven's sake, what are you doing? You appear to be homeless, so the only reason I'm able to continue visiting my home or even having meals here is because I feel sorry for you. You're going outside the bounds in an attempt to become a part of this house. With contempt, my mother-in-law said to me. After that, she tossed the ring in my direction and threatened to kill me if she saw her daughter wearing a phony ring like this. I had to keep my respect for elders intact, therefore I was unable to speak to her. She insulted me for a while until her daughter cut her off and implored mother, please don't let me stop respecting you. Do you treat everyone the same way? How did the manners you taught us end up? Just so you know, I am getting married to this man, whether or not you agree. Suddenly, a cat cut her mother-in-law's tongue stuck. I watched my queen stand up for me and I smiled a little. I spoke with Sarah to find out her thoughts about Elliping because I was afraid we wouldn't get married. She declared that she wouldn't flee in order to get married. Whether her mother approved or not, she would get married in front of her. She begged me to exercise a little patience with her mother, promising that she would change sooner than I thought. I had high hopes that her mother would change her mind about me, but I didn't believe her, so we planned the wedding. However, it never materialized. I questioned if it would be worthwhile to marry her. In one week, I will tie the knot, and I can't back out at this point. My soulmate and now want to spend the rest of our lives together, but her mother believes I'm getting married to her, only to guarantee myself a spot in their home. She thinks I'm so unworthy, despite the fact that she has never even heard me have a discussion to get to know me. She believes I'm an opportunist. She doesn't actually know anything about me. 
All she does is act and make inferences about me. She visited me at my apartment a few days ago, and to be very honest, I have no idea how she managed to get my address. She made sure to bring her contempt with her when she arrived. When I opened the door to a knock, I was shocked to see her. She entered, and I had to show her respect because she was about to become my mother-in-law. I offered her a seat, but she declined. She looked at me with hatred on her face and stated, quote, I'm not here to hang out with you or enjoy a cup of coffee. I'm here to tell you to keep your distance from my daughter. I won't allow you to wed her. What are others not saying about us? How much would you like to just leave Noah alone then? Just choose your pricing and I will get you the money. I smiled sarcastically and begged her to please get out of my house. She was upset that I had declined her offer and she went away slowly while muttering something angry. It still amazes me that she believes a happy life can be simply treated for a small amount of money. No matter what happens, I will never give up on my love for Sarah. Then, as she got into her car, she exclaimed, You'll regret declining my offer. You will not be permitted to wed my daughter. She then got in her car and drove away. Even though I knew it would hurt my heart, I really wanted to call Sarah and tell her. In addition, she mentioned that her mother would change and that I should stay a little longer. I'll give you guys an update shortly. Second update. Three months have passed since my last post, and I still find it extremely difficult to live with my mother-in-law around. I know you're thinking my wedding was amazing, but regrettably, I never imagined having a wedding like the one I did. Sarah had always dreamed of a beachside white wedding, so she suggested that we take the plane back to my birthplace to fulfill her desire. Thus, we spent months planning it. Upon learning that we intended to get married outside of the city, her mother became errant and threatened to forbid us from having a white wedding because, supposedly, it ill-fates a marriage. Maya felt her mother only wanted to be a part of her wedding, thus she was very easily persuaded. I had to make a lot of adjustments because my mother-in-law had gotten close to her daughter. Sarah merely desired a traditional wedding instead of a white one. After my mother-in-law summoned friends and distant family, they began their wedding rites, and I was forbidden from seeing Sarah since it was supposedly a terrible omen. Even though I don't believe in superstitions, I had to avoid Sarah. When we spoke on the phone, she stated that her mother would only ever want to be a part of her wedding and that she would be willing to participate provided the ceremony was conducted traditionally. I asked her whether she really wanted to change anything. I had to do it because I love my fiance so much. My mother-in-law persuaded her daughter that it would be best if we signed a prenuptial agreement the day before our wedding. I firmly believe that couples who sign prenuptial agreements don't trust one another. So what my mother-in-law is saying to her daughter makes me uneasy because she's molding her into the person she is. Sarah initially disagreed, but eventually went in as a result of emotional coercion from her mother. I would do everything for Sarah, and I was forced to sign the prenuptial agreement. Even though I am aware of her mother's evil schemes, I can't ignore her. Maya saw that I didn't like that she was making me sign anything. She even mentioned that it was merely a sheet of paper in an attempt to cheer me up. It doesn't imply that I can only use her funds or keep her possessions. But regardless of what she says, that's precisely what it means. Another thing that bothers me about her is that Max gave Sarah a car as a wedding present on the day of our wedding. Even if I am aware of how little money I have, that doesn't give them the right to give my wife a car as a wedding present. He's attempting to prove to society that I can't afford to purchase my wife a car, and even a blind guy can see that. I can't stand my mother-in-law or Max, so it was all her fault in the first place for inviting him to our wedding. It didn't help that I went up to Max and told him to return his car, since the vehicle was in San Bisne already. Sarah came over to ask me to quit bugging her friend while I was occupied chatting with Max. Simply put, I was acting as any other man would have acted. To be honest, I don't want Max to think he has a right to my wife. And he will, as long as that vehicle is registered in her name. Do you guys believe that my reaction to their friendship is excessive? Do you believe I'm just being overly cautious? In any case, I have to go for the time being, but I swear to give you an update on how things are going soon. The third update. Hello everyone, this has been quite the reveal. Seven months have passed since. I moved in with Noah and her family after the wedding, and it hasn't always been easy living in this place because my mother-in-law is determined to make my life a living hell here. My very own tiny studio was a gift from Noah, and I've always been curious about what folks were building in the backyard. For me, it ended up being a studio. Everyone was curious about what Sarah had requested to be built. And after the structure was completed, she told me that it was what she intended and also made the announcement to the family. 
After learning that Sarah had constructed me a studio, my mother-in-law became enraged. She then made an attempt to persuade Sarah to convert it into an apartment or a garden cottage, and they were able to lease one. Since the life of the son, she refused to carry out her mother's desires after we were married. My mother-in-law began calling me a fortune digger, and she even told her that if it was her responsibility to support my dream, then she should do it. Despite the fact that I have nothing against her, the fact that I paint irritates her. Being around her makes me uneasy since she has low regard for me, my career, and my profession. Even though I don't have a lot of money, I've always been a modest person, and I respect myself enough that I wouldn't consider getting married for financial gain. My wife's birthday was two weeks ago, and I had thoughtfully chosen a lovely present for her. You're probably asking why I say that because it was a portrait of our wedding day. That's because my mother-in-law destroyed it. Her eyes told me otherwise, even though she claimed it was an accident. Even my instincts tell me that she did what she did on purpose. How it all transpired was that I was winding up the portrait when my mother-in-law came in a few days before Noah's birthday. She asked me what I was painting and smiled enviously. Even though she does not mind that I am staying in her home and does not mind her business, I wanted to maintain the peace between us, even though I did not want to answer her. I gave her this response. When you next plan to drop by, please knock on my door since I'm working, and it's incredibly annoying when people just walk into my studio like you did. Sensing that I had stopped responding, she continued to be disrespectful, so I fired back, saying, don't you forget that as long as your studio is on my land, it remains in my name, and it's my property, so you cannot stop me from roaming freely on my own property. Eventually, she left. I was unaware that my mother-in-law intended to trash the portrait because she had seen it a few days prior to my wife's birthday. I went to retrieve the gift since I was going to deliver it to my wife, but it was nowhere to be found. It seemed as though it had simply disappeared when I asked my sister-in-law whether she had seen it. Looking around some more, I discovered it ripped in the dustpan. I mean, I asked everyone in the house who did it, and they all claimed they had no knowledge that I had drawn a portrait of that nature. Then over dinner, my mother-in-law came up and admitted to smashing the portrait. She had the cutest dog face, and she could have easily tricked Sarah into thinking it was an accident. Even now, I'm still curious about how she dissected it and said it was an accident. I watched her as she feigned anger, and as soon as I realized that listening to her talk had made me hungry, I got up. Maya did what she normally does and followed me inside the room. My wife's belief that her mother has embraced me and that everything she does is accidental or that I'm overreacting are the only other issues I have with her. How am I going to persuade my wife that her mother is really a wolf dressed like a sheep? She did, however, accompany me into the room. The fact that I did not get her anything for her birthday made her unhappy. It's quite unlikely that I used the image as a justification to avoid giving her a present, as she likely believes. The third update. Hello, everyone. It has been precisely three weeks since my previous post. I'm nearly tired of my mother-in-law's actions. I detest having to put up with her because she is my mother-in-law and she behaves like a young child. At this point, she blamed me for her actions and proceeded to push herself down the steps. Yes, you are correct. I'm mad at fault, so it can't explain how I am. Upon entering the house for my studio, I saw my mother-in-law as I ascended the stairs, began referring to me as an opportunist. As I continued to go ignoring her, I heard a sound that drew my attention as I approached the top of the steps. She was falling there. She shouted out to me as I turned, and I was helpless to save her, or so I believed. Everything made sense when I realized Sarah was standing right on the porch, something I was unaware of. My mother-in-law had to let go of herself after calling me derogatory names and nearly being caught red-handed emotionally abusing me. She was not in trouble with Sarah because her strategy worked. Rather, it was me. Sarah ran up to aid her mom after giving me the look that suggested I was to blame for her mother's alleged mishap. Everyone was afraid that my mother-in-law might never be able to walk independently again because she was unable to stand on her own two feet. We then took her to the hospital in the car after I carried her inside. Sarah asked me, why would I ever push her mother? As we waited tensely in the waiting area, she was angry and disgusted by my response. I attempted to convince her that I was unrelated to it, but she was unreceptive. She actually gave me a disgusted look and said some fairly hurtful things to my face. As I saw my mother go down those steps, I had a clear visual view of you. You did not give her a sympathetic look when she called out to you. I was in shock that I had married such a self-centered, haughty man as you. 
I just left the hospital and went home because I didn't want to say something hurtful that I would later regret. Every day, Sarah's remarks would not go out of my mind. I tried painting, but I was unable to do it. A few consumers of mine expressed dissatisfaction, saying that my paintings had lost some of their quality and beauty. Furthermore, given the daily hardship I endure with my mother-in-law, I am unable to fulfill their wishes. Since things with my mother-in-law are already strained, I try to make up for it for my clients in order to keep them from leaving. My mother-in-law will not stop lecturing and calling me names if I lose my clientele. We slept in different rooms after my wife, and I thought it was best. Since I've been sleeping in my studio, I have no doubt that my mother-in-law is ecstatic to hear this. I've only had distant glimpses of her since she returned home. Since the only person I would fight for doesn't believe me, I'm beginning to think about moving out. It's having emotional impact on me, but it's also having an impact on how productive I am. Maya has labeled me conceited and self-centered, which to be honest, I doubt even rank among my virtues. To spend my entire life attempting to define and validate my true identity to others is the last thing I would want. Fourth update. Hello everyone. It has been roughly two weeks, give or take a few days. I'm practically out of business because I've lost so many clients and I have no idea how to win them back. Everyone says I'm no longer creative and I've become rusty, but how could I lose something that's a part of me? I'm upset. I had never thought love could cause such intense nervousness. Noah visited my studio a few days ago with the intention of confronting me about my relationship with my mother-in-law. I figured they would all just settle down and quit constantly hounding me because I was moving into the studio and no longer sleeping at the house. I had no idea how much my mother-in-law had in store for me. I honestly assumed Sandvi was coming to make up, but she was really coming to check if her mother's claims were accurate. At this point, I gave up painting and just sat there listening to her. Then, as she continued to tell what her mother had said, she became more animated. She was almost too certain, one could say, that her mother was telling the truth. My mother-in-law informed her daughter that I have consistently tried to physically harm her. She even went so far as to accuse me of insulting her after I had previously raised my hand to her. How on earth do you think of such things? Do you truly think I would harm your mother in that way? Noah, I have always treated your mother with the utmost respect. However, it appeared that my remarks were hitting a brick wall. I've been my mother my entire life, but I have only known you for a few years. And mom is not a liar at all. Furthermore, you are an artist. You have the gift of lying. Who knows if lying is not an added bonus to your talent? Adiada and I ought to have been married, as my mother had always desired. If I had, she would not have had to go through all of this. I was shocked to learn from her response that my gift for lying originates from lying. That's when I realized we were completely broken. Rather than trust her husband's word, she chooses to believe her mother's lies. I was upset that I was unable to enter the house to pack my stuff, so I just grabbed what I would need from the studio and headed out. She followed me and continued asking where I was going, but I chose not to respond since I knew she would never trust anything I told her. It was then that I discovered the apartment I'm in right now. I haven't let Sarah know where I'm staying since she keeps calling, and I have to block her because I need my inner peace, which I can't have with her calling all the time. Am I a horrible spouse for treating her like that? It's been a year since my last update, and I must say that karma never lets me down. This is update number five, the final one, and its title is this. So, a few months after my departure from Sarah, she called me on her work phone. Although I was ready to hang up when I realized it was her voice and that she had never contacted me before, I gave it some thought since she had never contacted me before. She pleaded with me to pardon her and give her five minutes to clarify herself, so I complied. She expressed regret and asked to speak with me in person. The next day, we got together, and she gave me a detailed explanation of everything. She claimed that her sister had been observing her mother and had witnessed the way my mother-in-law handled me. She was afraid her mother would reject her, so she was reluctant to be vulnerable with Sarah. Afterwards, she summoned up the confidence to tell Sarah everything. Like always, no had her doubts at first, but eventually she came to terms with the fact that her mother was blind. I had no notion that she felt safe in that place, yet she cried as she apologized and gave an explanation. She went on to inform me that, without my humor, the house is empty. And that's when she asked to move in with me. I left things unpleasant with my mother, so I basically have nowhere to go. She said that if I went seeking you, she would disown me, but I could not live with a lie. With a person who is indifferent to the happiness of her own daughter, as she brushed away her tears, she remarked to me, 
As she spoke, I could feel the love in her eyes. Children may find it challenging to resist their influence because mothers have a lot of power. We moved in together after I forgave her because I could not bear to see her in such sadness. In addition to Sarah, Sophia left the residence since Sarah was no longer making the house payments. Now that she's stuck, my mother-in-law lies alone in a lonely house. She was well served by karma, and I'm delighted she received what she deserved. Sarah has made the decision to carry on with her education since she is happier than ever right now. She declared that she had lofty goals when she enrolled in graduate school. I will support her and, if necessary, accompany her to the end of the world as her spouse. By the way, I'm very excited that we'll soon be parents. Although Sarah is a little disturbed and afraid of becoming like her own mother, I have no doubt that she will be an excellent mother 